You have to get to the place where you're sick and tired of being sick and tired and say, look, if God be for me, who can be against me? If you can really heal me, then I'm going to do what it takes, right? It's not just, oh, pray for me, pray for me, pray. Yeah, that helps too, but you got to do your part. You need to press into the Lord. It's the privilege we have. It's the privilege we have to worship and get in his presence. It's the privilege we have to walk in the authority that God has given us and to know who we are as the ecclesia, the one who legislates with our words, the ones who, who can call those things which be not as though they are. That's who we are, not just churchgoers, just on a Sunday that we went to church and we have no victory in our lives. That's baloney. That's passivity. That's not who we are. I've seen too many miracles. I've experienced God, as many of you, in ways that are unbelievable. I'm not going backwards. COVID's not taking me out. It's not taking my breath away. I'm going to worship God, and I'm going to stand on the Word of God and believe what God's Word says. Now, again, we got to build ourselves up. If you're not there, good. Then do something about it. That's all. Because God's, listen, he's, every one of us are at a different level. And God's not putting us down. He's saying, come on, come on, take, give, take my hand. Let me bring you along. Let me help you along here to get to the place because I have purpose and destiny for you. I don't want you to be stuck, stuck and stagnant. This woman had purpose. And so what happened here, and I'm going to close with this, she was there for 12 years, and this, this woman. 12 years represents government. God is shifting the government in our lives. He's shifting the, the system that we've been operating in to come into a place of breakthrough and miracles. And so she heard the report. But when you look up the word, she said, for she thought it, and she kept repeating the word. In other words, she was meditating on the word. She was decreeing the word. If I can just touch him, become one with him, to fasten myself to him, that's what it means. Like you're, you're one. It's like, you know, you have those sticky paper. If you put it on you, it's hard to pull apart. She became one with him, one with the word. That's what we have to do. Where the word means more to you, and it's more alive and more real to you than what's happening. See, that's the power. It's a supernatural power. And so it says immediately when she touched the hem, what did the hem represent? I was going to bring my tallit and forgot. She touched the hem of his garment, the tallit, the end of the tallit. And what that was, it represented the word. She touched it. She grabbed hold of the word. And it says here that she fell in her body and she knew she was healed. And immediately Jesus recognized virtue. That word, in another version, it says power. That word is dunamis. And dunamis is a uh, mighty power. I don't know, I wrote it somewhere. It means strength, power, ability, power for performing miracles, excellence of soul. All right? So what happened was that virtue, that power came in because she was battling with infirmity. Remember, that infirmity also means weakness of soul. It touched the... Her, her soul realm, it healed her. She, had everything, she lost everything. She had nothing. Could you imagine how depleted she was? And now, she, I mean, she had money. She was, tw I mean, all these years going to a doctor, and now you're being kicked out. Now you got to go around saying unclean, unclean, when she was trying to do everything in her power to get healed? Come on. Could you imagine what she was feeling? That's how religious system will do. That wears you down. And so she was like, oh, my God, I have, there's life. I'm hearing something here. I can, if I could just touch him. Jesus is saying, you can touch him right now. And that power went out and touched her. That dunamis power, excellence of his soul, excellence of healing, that delivering power touched her and made her whole. And that's what God's saying to us. He's saying, who touched me? See, God is so ravished by us. It's what it says in the Song of Solomon. He's touched by the, the fragrance or the currency, I should say, of heaven is our faith. It was faith that got a hold of her. Not your 14,000 hours in prayer. Not your, and although that's good, but if you're looking at that as the pat on your shoulder, it's faith. God is saying, do you believe me? Will you trust me for it? Will you believe me that I can break through, that I'm the God of the miraculous? that you can speak to your mountain and command it to fall into the sea. That's where he's saying, come on, I want you to come up higher. I want your faith to come to another level. And then he said to her, daughter, your faith, 
your personal trust and confidence in me has restored you to health. Daughter, that's a word. That was a covenantal word. You're in covenant. That's your inheritance. Your inheritance, my inheritance is healing. It's deliverance. It's prosperity. It's freedom. It's breakthrough. That's our inheritance. So now the choice is up to us. And God is saying, I came to give you that life more abundantly. Do you want to be made whole? Do you want to be made well? Do you want to stay where you're at and blame everybody and your mother for your problems? Or do you want to make a choice and say, enough is enough? I'm not going to blame anymore. I'm not saying people didn't have uh, create issues, but then we have the choice. It's up to us to want to stop blaming everybody and say, all right, what do I have to do? I have to take ownership for my part. And, and that's where we have to humble ourselves and just say to the Lord, God, please, I want healing. I want to meditate on your word. And, and I want you to just, you know, in Romans 12, 1 and 2, and I'm going to ask you to stand with this. It says here, therefore, brethren, I urge you, therefore, brethren, therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies, dedicating all of yourself, set apart as a living sacrifice, holy and well-pleasing to God, which is your rational, logical, intelligent act of service. Don't be conformed to the world to its superficial values and customs, but be transformed and progressively changed as you mature spiritually by renewing your mind. We can't change without the Word. You've got to meditate on the Word. Focusing on godly values and ethical attitudes so that you may prove for yourself what the will of God is, which is good and acceptable and perfect. So, here are certain things you need to address. Are you, are you constantly complaining? Are you discontent? Are you always talking negatively? Are you backslidden? Um, your words, are you faithless? Are you always worried, always angry, always annoyed, argumentative? Well, that's a soulish realm. God wants us to be healed. So what I want you to do is, some of you may want to come up front. Some of you may want to stand or just stay where you're at. Because I, I, I want you to lay hands on yourself if you want. And I want you to pray along with me because we're going to renounce. We're going to take authority. First of all, renounce any agreement with the spirit of infirmity, poverty, and isolation. And then I'm going to pray. But I feel like there are people that have been really struggling emotionally. And God wants you to be healed. He wants you to lay your hands on your, your this, is, this is our soul realm. This is it. And he wants us to lay hands on ourselves and pray because I can't lay hands on you. But he wants you to pray and believe God for healing. See, the enemy, for too long, like that sinking giant, tormenting you day and night, it's up to you to say enough is enough, and the word is going to have final say over my life. Right? So, so just say, Father, in Jesus' name, I come out of agreement, and I renounce a spirit of infirmity, a spirit of poverty, a spirit of isolation. I am not one with you. And I cut and sever my agreements with you. In Jesus' name. So, Lord Jesus, I'm asking you to heal every wound in my soul that is driving me to sin, to walk in unbelief. I ask you to heal every wound that is sabotaging my life, making me physically sick and creating an open door to be tormented in my mind. I repent, Lord, for being judgmental, for being nasty to people, and for talking about people. Lord, I ask you to strengthen me today and release your dunamis power in my soul to heal me physically and emotionally. And Lord, I thank you for victory, for deliverance, for a sound mind in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, this isn't just a one-time prayer. This is something you have to be proactive with because you know, the Bible says we're more than conquerors through Christ who strengthens us. The Bible says we're victorious people. The Bible says we're the head and not the tail. 
the Bible says that we have the greater one within us. Greater is he that's in us and he that's in the world. The Bible says we have the mind of Christ. The Bible doesn't say we're scattered, we're confused. No, 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 that's the lie. That's a pattern that's been in your life that God is saying enough. The Lord is saying, I came to set the captives free. And so that's, that's what he wants. It's like, Lord, wherever, and a lot of times, you know what, let me just say this. And we, we have wounds in our soul from hurts that we're even afraid to talk about, that we don't want to tell people about. We're afraid. God's saying, I know him. Just lay him on the altar and allow me to heal. He, let me heal where you've been abandoned. Let me heal where you've been abused, where you've been made fun of, where there's been racism in your life. Let me heal that. Because you know what? That bitterness thing won't take you far. It'll just keep you in a hole. It'll keep you stagnant. So Holy Spirit, again, we just thank you for your brooding presence for all of your people. Lord, you love every single one of us. You know everything about us from before we were in my, our mother's womb. You knew all the things that we were going to go through, but yet you're there for us because your word says you will never leave us nor forsake us. You won't abandon us. And we have to stop running. God, forgive us when we have gone to food, shopping, things, cars, people for our healing instead of you. Only you can satisfy, oh God. So Holy Spirit, today we make that decision of surrender to you. Lord, I surrender all. And Holy Spirit, we ask you to open up our eyes that even as we meditate on your word, we will see and we will hear things that we've never seen before in your word. And Lord, we just thank you that step by step each day, you will give us guidance and direction. Holy Spirit, we just thank you for that. So Lord, right now I speak to every soul. I speak to every wound, every arrow that's been in people's heart and their souls. And we pull them out now. By faith in Jesus' name, we decree freedom and deliverance. Lord, we say this is a day of turnaround and restoration. Restoration, that Lord, your blood heals. And Lord, we just thank you so much that we're all accepted and you love us so much. And as a good, good father, you want the best for each and every one of us. I'm telling you, there's some here that the enemy's lying to you saying, yeah, but your situation, you're always being, and I'm telling you right now, that is the enemy speaking to you. And God is saying that he has come to heal your heart. And just say yes to him, let him do what he needs to do in your life. So Lord, we just thank you. I thank you for everybody here. I thank you for your amazing love that you have for all of us. And that, Lord, your word says you don't want that any should perish. You don't want that any of us should be in a rotten, stinking place where we don't have freedom. But, Lord, you're, you're bringing us into that place of wholeness, of deliverance, of restoration. And so, Lord, I bless each and every person here in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Amen.